Let's get right now to today's action, though, with our first guest, and that is Phil Camporiali of J.P. Morgan Asset Management with us on set. Phil, good to have you. Good to be here. How do we read the inflation picture? Yesterday was doom and gloom. Today, <laughs> a little bit better. Where do you, where does J.P. Morgan Chase stand? Yeah, so the inflation data that we got this week, Brian, CPI has to take precedent over the producer price index. So I think if you think about mixed messages, I think yesterday is more important for the narrative. The bottom line for us, though, Brian, is inflation may be bad for, do you think the Fed should be imminently cutting rates? But it is not bad for economic growth. Okay, what I mean for earnings? It's that because so investors nominal, care about earnings yep. as much or more than they care about economic growth, I think. Yeah. So the nominal growth forecast that we have, OK, which is roughly that the, the real GDP is going to be about two ish percent inflation, about two and a half to three. That's five percent nominal growth, Brian. That's a pretty good number when it comes to earnings. And 100 percent agree. We kick off earnings starting tomorrow and. Listen, all eyes are going to be on earnings with the valuations up this high, with the market moving by 26 Do earnings, given that parts of the market yeah. may be considered stretched by some, yep. parts mm -hmm. by some, do we need earnings to be perfect? We do. There is a high bar for earnings. So I think what you're going to see is if companies miss, they're going to get hurt. And if companies make, maybe not, they, they, don't, they don't run as much. But I think er, the earnings season this, this quarter is very, very important. I want to be really clear about something, though. This economy doesn't need the interest rate cut. I, I think we're getting a little bit kind of um, uh, crazy about when the Fed is actually going to move. I think what we're saying is as long as directionally the next move is not a hike. So let's stop there. That's the line in the sand that we're making. I think stocks are going to be OK. And that's what's leading us to our nominal growth. I, I love that you said that because I've been doing this longer than I care to imagine. Yeah. And I used to go months without talking about the Federal Reserve. Yeah. Now I can't go, can't go minutes, minutes. I know. <laughs> without talking about the Federal Reserve, yeah. and I, I, don't, yeah. I don't like it. Yeah. We're too reliant, I feel, yeah. on the Fed. Right. And, B Brian, what have we seen all last year? The Fed stopped hiking rates in July of last year, okay, have been on pause since then. It's been a pretty nice run. I think this economy, people are so paralyzed by... You know, the last cycle and a zero interest rate policy, that's not normal. That's not the new normal. That's not normal, okay? And I think going forward, a 2% real rate that some would think would be so restrictive is exactly what was the normal before the financial crisis. I think that's what we're going back to. Guess what? You Companies, sound like an old man right and, now, and, Phil. Yeah, the old man on the couch. 6% mortgages, how oh. dare they? That used to be considered low. Right. Now it's considered high. It's the same 6%. Unfortunately, everybody's locked into all these 3 and 3.5% and three and mortgages. Yeah. Okay. You said we don't need, we don't need it. No. a rate cut. No. What if we, I don't think we'll get one, but what if we do? What if we get two rate cuts? Is that just literally just fuel on that fire? Yeah, I think what the rate cuts would do. Do stocks rip? Yeah, I, I, I think stocks are kind of front running that a little bit, which is where the earnings story comes in. So that valuation story is predicting the Fed to start easing rates. OK, so if they do cut rates, I think what would happen, Brian, I think you would get a rally in interest rates. I think that, that the, you know, the 10 year note would start rallying. And that's maybe not something that they would particularly want. Wait, uh, the, if they cut the, rates, the 10-year yield goes up? The 10-year rallies goes down. Oh, oh yeah. the 10-year yeah. price. Yes. I didn't know if you're yeah. talking about price yeah. or yield. No, the yield goes I down. I was thinking, right. what in the world are we talking but I, about? But we don't need it. We don't need it. So, so I, I guess a 4.5% 10-year Treasury rate, where we're sitting at about now, that's fair. If, again, you're thinking about 2% real growth and 2.5% inflation. Can yeah. stocks, uh, we got to wrap it, but can mm -hmm. stocks move higher the rest of this year? Low probability of recession, labor supply meeting labor demand, labor supply getting more productive, 7% deficit and a $7 trillion Fed balance sheet. Brian, this is all liquidity that's pointing us to be overweight stocks, but stocks that don't need the rate cut. Large cap over small cap. We don't have REITs in the portfolio, and, that's, that's, and, and the high-yield credit story also makes Phil sense. Kemp